Jody Carruthers, in case I haven't had a chance to meet you. I'm the director of Youth Ministries, and uh, if you would like to, I'd like to meet you out in the lobby after services today. Um, our scripture reading is going to be from John chapter 6, verses 24 through 29. Uh, 30 and 35, I believe as well. Um, when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and came to Capernaum, looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, where did you, when did you get here? Jesus replied, I assure you that you are looking for me not because you saw miraculous signs, but because you ate all the food you wanted. Don't work for food that doesn't last, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the human one will give you. God the Father has confirmed him as his agent to give life. They asked, what must, what must we do in order to accomplish what God requires? Jesus replied, this is what God requires, that you believe in him whom God sent. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. Let us pray. God, continue to talk to us now that we are meditating upon your word. And use me as an instrument. That everything just about to say come from you and be for the education of your church. Amen. We pray. Amen. There is a show that I really, really like. Maybe you like it too. It's called the uh, the Big Bang Theory. Uh, maybe you like it. Maybe you have seen it. And it follows the misadventures of uh, these scientists. There are some. Uh, Physicists and astrophysicists and advanced engineers and uh, uh, microbiologists, kind of what they do. Uh, many of them work at Caltech in California. And uh, it's just funny, right? It is just uh, a pretty funny show. And I like it because, of course, it's funny, but also I like the snippets of science that they give through the show. But also I like it because uh, they are a bunch of nerds. And voila, uh, surprise, surprise, your pastor is a nerd. Uh, if you haven't seen my office, it's full of Star Wars stuff, which is heavily referenced in Big Bang Theory, and comic books, and uh, miscellaneous sci-fi stuff. So Star Trek, so if I, you know, even I was very happy that uh, Jerry Carruthers' uh, son, you know, in your BBS sent him the Green Dog and Prosper. I was like, yes, somebody, Green Dog and Prosper. So anyway, having said that, uh, one of the episodes uh, of the Big Bang Theory uh, uh, kind of centered around Sheldon. I mean, a lot of things are about Sheldon, kind of one of the main, main characters. Uh, next, next picture, there you go. Sheldon, which is kind of a, uh, a genius and a, has an eidetic memory. And, and uh, you know, he's just odd. He, he's just odd. He's funny. Anyway, and her mother, Mary, Mary Cooper, came to visit them one, 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 one day. He wants to see what's going on in their life. So Sheldon wants to take her to a, a lecture. And she says, no, I don't want to do that. I want to go around and uh, tourist around LA. And the, the, the friends take her touring around churches in LA. So I want to pre present you snippets of what happened in that church when they are uh, in LA. So here it comes. <laughs> Hey, while we're here, why don't we all do some praying? Let's put a little church in this church. Oh, I'm not sure we it's should. It's easy. I'll show you how. Lord, Mary Cooper here, coming to you from Gamora, California. <laughs> I want to thank you for the blessing that is my little Shelly. I also want to thank you for the continued strength not to cold cock him with my Bible. <laughs> all right, Penny, your turn. Okay, um, <clears throat> hey God, what's up? <laughs> um, I'm good, but uh, it would be a big help to my family if you could get my brother to stop cooking meth. <laughs> but no cops, be cool. <laughs> she also goes a little overboard on the love thy neighbor. Could probably use that chat you had with Mary Magdalene. <laughs> Leonard, you're up. Wasserman, you're on deck. <laughs> Okay, I don't know. It's probably a little late to ask you to make me taller. <laughs> oh, um, 
If you could help out with me and my girlfriend, she's all the way in India, that, that would be great. Hear that girl trouble? Turns out we were both wrong on that front. <laughs> How about you? Uh, me? No, thanks. I'm good. I'm really just trying not to burst into flames. <laughs> Rajas? Uh, he says he's having trouble dropping those last five pounds. Huh. I might have gone with the talking to girls thing. <laughs> yeah, no, you only get one wish. All right, so, pretty funny, huh? Yeah? Uh, and it starts with Mary doing kind of a calm pray, you know, thank you for Shelley, thank you, and it's funny, obviously, but, but it's kind of a traditional prayer, if you will. But then down the line, it starts to sound more like they're talking to a genie, right? I wish you can make me taller. Uh, it's kind of lame for us, for us to do that. Uh, you know, the, then the, the friend, uh, Rajesh, uh, says, you know, I want to drop those five pounds. And then the, uh, the uh, Jewish friends, uh, you know, tried to say, oh, I want to do that, talk to girls. I uh, said, no, you only get one wish. You only get one wish. So again, it sounded more like they were, instead of talking to God, they were talking, talking to a genie, you know, like, just rub a real hot lamp and, you know, something is going to happen like that. You only get one wish. You only get one wish. So that's what I want to start with. Us. Start with. You see, uh, let's make it on that. You see that sometimes when we pray, when we pray, we sound sometimes like that. We sometimes sound more like we're wishing and we're asking for uh, a genie to ask our bidding instead of asking and praying and having a conversation with God. And I think that this, this passage illustrates that. So the passage tells us, uh, we find, or what Jory read this morning, we find the, uh, the disciples in, in Jesus kind of in this conversation with the crowd. And early in the chapter, we find that, that, that Jesus had uh, fed thousands of people, right? And uh, they were so excited about this feeding of, of everybody that they want him to make him uh, his, his king. So he retreats back to the mountain and then sends the disciples across the lake. And then he joins them walking through the, through the water. And we have we have recently got preached about that one, and and then but the, the, the crowds find them, find them, and they come from everywhere to to find Jesus, and Jesus tells them, I assure you that you are looking for me not because how uh, because you saw miraculous miraculous signs, but because you ate all the food you wanted. So in other words, that people were treating Jesus as the genie, right? He was more food. I want more food. Why wish some more food? And Jesus tells them, no, no, no. You, you, you are following here for the wrong reasons. You are in love with the bread, not with the one who provided the bread. And this is all wrong. So he tells them, do, do not work for the food that doesn't last, but for the, for the food that endures for eternal life. And so they have a go back and forth, back and forth, and, 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 and even the crowd asks, okay, so give us a sign. Give us a sign. Come on. You know, we have all these other prophets that gave us a sign. What is your sign? And Jesus says, uh, surely, let me just come back to here. I assure you that it wasn't Moses who gave the bread from heaven, but you, but my Father gives you the, the true bread of heaven. The bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life uh, to the world. So, just like the crowd, sometimes we want the bread instead of the one who gives the bread. Does that make sense? We want to, we treat Jesus again as uh, that one who, we, we just rub hard enough, we just clean the lamp, the genie is going to come, he's going to wish us our, our, our wishes, or we're going to grant us our wishes. I want to be taller, I want to be richer, I want to be healed, I want to, you know, uh, have more money, I want to fill the blank. And we are wrapped in this, I want, I want, I wish, I want, I want, that we forget God and the relationship. Now, am I saying, don't go asking anything to God? Or we should not be praying for hope and healing and uh, protection and so on and so forth? Yes! Of course we should. We ought to. But 
This is the difference, and this is the point that I want to make today. The difference is, is that we, regardless if we get what we want or not, regardless if we get taller or not, if we drop the five pounds or not, if we, against again, if we get what we get or not get what we want, we still and we stick with God. Because the relationship itself is more important than anything we can get out of. So we are, and we follow Jesus not because he provides us food, but we, call it, we follow Jesus because we, because we want a relationship with Jesus. Does that make sense? In other words, many of, many of you are here are married, amen? amen. Some, some of you are married, some of you. All right, all right. <laughs> if we married you, we all made vows, right? We all made vows. Uh, so we, we, we said something like this. Uh, we promise to be together for better or worse, for richer or poor, in sickness and in health, to love and cherish until, until we are parted by death. And that's kind of the traditional vow, right? That's traditional vow. Now imagine that you are there at the altar, and you are getting married, and your vow is something, something like this, something like this. Uh, I take you, Wendy, so I don't know why. Uh, when things go well, if you continue to give me stuff, uh, but if you, you know, if things don't work out, you know, if things come worse, if you don't give me stuff, I may mean, not be sticking around, I probably not. Uh, if you're sick, well, good luck. <laughs> Look for somebody to help you. Uh, and I will love and cherish only if benefits me. All right? How many people will follow? How many people will be still married if that will be the vows? We, we marry, yes, because, you know, we feel attracted to that person, to him or her. And, uh, yes, but we, I hope that it is beyond that. I hope that we marry and we get into a relationship, not because of the benefit that I'm going to get, but because of the relationship and what matters is to share life together for better or for worse. In good and in the bad, in sickness and in health. Uh, because for those who are married for a long time know that when rocky times come and it, in our relationship is not found in, in this mutual relationship, most likely the marriage or whatever relationship is, you're gonna, you're gonna come through, right? And now this is gonna apply for every relationship, not only for spouses. There's another show that I like, is these little snippets. Uh, I like comedians and I like stand-up comedians. And uh, I like Jerry Seinfeld, he's one of my heroes. It's kind of funny. Anyway, uh, he has a show called Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. And it sounds like that. It's a show that they go around driving in a car, and uh, meet the little car, and they go and drink coffee, and they talk. So he takes one of the comedians one day, and they were talking about uh, Jerry Sample just has some children. And he says, you know, I don't know if I want children or if I can handle children, because I don't know what to say to children. And so Jerry Sample said, well, that's a silly thing to say. He says, well, you know, uh, what happens when you know, those complicated questions come, and I don't know what to say and do? And he said, listen, children don't need anything. They only need you. And I think that is the point, that in every relationship, we do not need the stuff that comes along with relationships, so we just need the relationship. And that is what I'm going to, that's what I'm going to want to get to. Of course, being in a relationship, there are benefits, right? We get to share our, our joys, we get to show, share our victories, but also we get to share our pain and our sorrows, we also get to share who we are as life. So yes, there's benefits. Uh, for, for having a relationship and being in a relationship. And of course, there's a benefit of being in a relationship with, 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 with Jesus. He came to give us life and life in abundance. But I pray and I hope that we do not seek Jesus just to get stuff, but that we are into with Jesus and we follow Jesus because we want to be in this relationship. Because if we know that we are in this relationship, no matter what comes, we're going to get through. Amen? So to conclude, I pray that today, when you come to have communion, 
if you find yourself having that relationship with, with the stuff that you asked to Jesus, come as you are. Don't, don't, don't. We all have done it. We all have done it. Don't come ashamed. Just renew your relationship with, with Jesus. Renew that covenant and say, I'm here because I want to be with you regardless of, of what happens, or regardless of if I get this stuff. And I was, as, as I was preparing this sermon, I, this, this just came popping back and, back and forth uh, over and over again in my, in my mind. Four or five. Four or five. You know this one. And I want just for us to say in the first verse. Just remember that when you are with Jesus, in his relationship, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God.